So let's talk a little bit about LDAP authentication. Um, now, I, I, I mentioned it briefly in passing earlier. Um, the idea is that we would keep the hashed securely password for, uh, for a user in the LDAP entry with that user information. And it would be protected by what we call an ACL, an access control list, or an ACI, an access control instruction, would be more accurate in LDAP. And what that means is that we would basically restrict it so that actually looking at the password would be permissible only by the super admin of the system called uh, direct, the directory manager. And then what we would do in order to authenticate is LDAP has an ability to bind to the server as a user so that you, as I mentioned with the ACIs, you need to, to present the, your credentials and say, I am this user and I prove it. And then a set of ACIs that apply to you will op open up or restrict access to parts of the, of the LDAP server. So when you, when you connect to an LDAP server, you, would, you bind to it um, using, using your LDAP credentials, and it does that with a traditional uh, pa you know, password that is hashed with the known hashing algorithm and, sal and salt and compared with the hash that is in, that contained in the LDAP server, and if they match, then you gain access to those pieces of the LDAP server. The, uh, one of the nice pieces about the LDAP protocol is, of course, that it tells you, hey, we accepted that, or no, we didn't. And so this can now be uh, taken and used for local authentication, where we just check for that response. We don't have to do anything on the LDAP server after, we're, after we've bound. We just check to see if the bind itself was successful, and then we know with certainty that this user was accepted onto the system. And, uh, and by extension, then, acceptable locally. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, the general gist of authentication with LDAP and Kerberos. Um, and then we have a, another topic, which is authorization. Um, now that we know that you are who you say you are, authorization is now asking, is now determining, so you're this user, what can you do? What, what, are, what actions are you permitted to uh, accomplish on the system? Um, with SSSD, the, uh, we generally uh, are only talking about whether or not they have authorization to log in. Um, that's that's the only one in most cases that we care about. Um, later on, I'll talk to you, I'll talk a little bit about our sudo responder and our ability to uh, make decisions whether or not you're allowed to act as root on certain certain features. But on the whole, our core functionality for uh, logins. So. We need to handle uh, two things. Um, the first is simple account, uh, account management, uh, things like your password is expiring, you need to change it before we can let you in. Um, your password has, exp or sorry, I should say your password has expired, you must change it before you log in. Your password is expiring, you may wish to change it uh, manually once you're logged in, or uh, we've, we're considering adding the possibility to I'll give you an option to change it at login, but we're not sure if that's going to happen. Um, also, things like uh, access control, uh, access control rules, uh, such as those provided by Free IPA, where uh, they have a service called uh, HBAC, Host-Based Access Control, which decides this is a set of users and groups that are allowed to log into this set of systems. And in a future version, it's also going to be this is a set of users and groups that are allowed to log into this set of systems during this set of times, keeping your uh, keeping your access down to work hours or emergency, you know, emer or uh, scheduled maintenance hours and things like that. Um, we uh, we have a number of different access control providers in the SSD, and I'll, I'll talk terminology in the next uh, segment. But in ge in general, those are the the two main features, the three main features of SSD are identity, lookups, authentication, and authorization of login.